Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we have a rather small stubby rocket powered by an RS-25, which, as you may or may not know, is the same engine used by the Space Shuttle and will be the same engine used by the SLS. Now, what this is to do is to uh, demonstrate the efficiency of an engine which is designed to go all the way from the surface into orbit. It is a hydrogen burning engine, and if you remember my video on nozzle shapes, you'll know that it has a, a well, a cleverly shaped nozzle that tricks the whole thing to be remain stable regardless of the altitude. But what you can see in the window there is the specific impulse is increasing as we go higher and higher and higher and of course the engine burns out and the apoapse of the spacecraft is just over 114 kilometers although we're still going up there's a bit of drag there and then when we get up to that altitude it actually ends up being slightly below that. Now what I'm doing here is providing a baseline for a question that I get asked quite often about real rockets. Specifically, is there an advantage in launching your rocket off the top of a mountain? And as it happens, the answer is yes, but it's not a simple back of the envelope calculation and the advantages are actually very small. The, the advantages you get from launching at a higher altitude come from three different things. First of all, as you're at a higher altitude, your initial specific impulse is going to be higher. Therefore, you get more thrust from your fuel. Secondly, because you're higher up, less air, you have less air resistance. And finally, least important of all, if you're higher up, you have slightly less gravity to contend with. Realistically, it's the specific impulse and the air resistance that provide the biggest difference. And the differences add up, they compound on top of each other. So you can see here that by moving the launch site up around 50 to 60 meters, we're going to get about an extra 500 meters of apoapse. Now to start from a higher altitude inside the vehicle assembly building requires a bit of trickery. What you do, of course, is you can use shift click to select the node and use the, the node um, displacement tool and then drag it straight up by, you know, pointing the camera at an angle and dragging sideways. So. Uh, that basically due to, you know, small angle of perspective and look, you don't need to do the trigonometry, just understand that's way to break the out of the hangar. Here we've managed to get up to 829 meters, that's over 2,000 feet higher than the other test. How much does that help? Well, let's find out. So yeah, launching straight up, the effectiv effectiveness builds because you're starting with a higher performance early on and it's only a tiny fraction of a percentage but that is then contributed you know is carried all the way up so this very small difference at the start compounds for every second your engine bur is burning it's more and more and more efficient and so it can be get quite a bit of advantage also worth noting the uh, plumes here they spread out with altitude this is the new real plumes uh, mod this is of course all part of the realism overhaul and we'll talk about that in a little bit anyway yeah look 100 121.7 kilometers so the gain in altitude from this straight up straight down test is higher than the amount by which you're raising the rocket to start with. Now, there's a limit to how um, how high you can stack your launch clamps, but many people said, why not launch from the top of a mountain? In the US, the launch sites are all at low altitude on the coast, but in China, we have at least two launch sites, this Taiyun and uh, Xichang, which uh, Xichang is over 1,800 meters high. So this is over 6,000 feet up, and obviously from this altitude, the specific impulse starts uh, at 381. That is an immediate advantage. And of course, the advantage builds and builds and builds as the thing goes higher. If we zoom the camera way back, you can see the Himalayas in the background. Now, yeah, you could actually try and build a launch site on top of something like Mount Everest or Mount Chimborazo, but... You know, getting there is logistically quite difficult. This is a, you know, actually a flat spot in the middle of these high plains, and it actually works out pretty well for them. But it should be noted that China's new launch site, Wengchang, is another coastal site because moving sh uh, rockets via barges solves a lot of logistics. Now, what about taking it up to the kind of altitude that aircraft fly at? Well, 
Turns out that the launch structures just don't like having anything that big. But this is Kerbal Space Program. Rockets are free. We can have as many as we like. So we build this contraption to carry a rocket up to altitude and then suspend it under parachutes. You know what? They actually did test this with nuclear missiles. Can you believe they tossed them out the back of a, a cargo aircraft on a parachute and then tested they could launch? This thing, well, after a little bit of practice, I do get it pointed straight up and down. And the specific impulse at these altitudes is already well above 400. Now, to be clear, I specifically chose the RS-25 because it works across a very wide range of atmospheric pressures. And it has a lot of variability within its uh, specific impulse. Now, some of the solid rocket boosters, which might have been better test subjects, they have a much smaller range of specific impulses because they're designed to fire for shorter times and a more uh, consistent range of atmospheres. So you don't get that variation that the RS-25 has to deal with. Anyway, given the obvious performance advantages, uh, you would think that air-launched uh, satellites might be uh, quite more popular than they are. We have Pegasus, which doesn't fly quite as often as uh, you'd expect. We have Strato Launch, the largest aircraft ever is being built to carry multiple Pegasus rockets to launch into space. But truthfully, the performance advantage isn't that great. To be honest, I have deliberately chosen this test rocket to demonstrate this, I, I, it doesn't have enough delta V to really get very high or very far. It has a dummy payload on the front to limit its delta V to about just over two kilometers per second. So now imagine that that payload is in fact a second stage which is going into orbit. If you look at the likes of the Falcon 9 and the Atlas V, most of the delta V for getting into orbit is actually the second stage. The first stage is powerful, it has to get the thing going upwards, it has to lob the second stage on a steep enough trajectory, high enough and long enough that it can use its weaker engine to accelerate the payload into orbit. And since most of that is being done in a vacuum, essentially any difference between the launch altitude becomes irrelevant. Elon Musk estimated that uh, it would be about a 5% difference. The real advantage of air-launched rockets is that you can pick your launch site, you can pick your launch latitude, and uh, you have much better constraints in terms of weather. But then, you have this giant aircraft to maintain, so the advantages are ultimately questionable. Anyway, I guess the other thing that I want to talk about is the fact that uh, for the last month we finally had a good release of a Realism Overhaul. A Realism Overhaul for a long time was stuck on 1.13, which was, I mean, it worked pretty well other than the wheels breaking all the time. There had been a beta or early access releases for Realism Overhaul for 1.22 for a long time, but there was glitches and weird bits and pieces that never quite worked for me. And most importantly, there wasn't any CCAN support, so you couldn't do a one-click install to basically get all the awesome realism overhaul stuff you need. But that, uh, since June, apparently has been working just fine. So you can get CCAN, you can go in and add realism overhaul, or realistic progression zero if you want full-on career mode, and you can get all the awesome uh, spacecraft parts, all the awesome new features that make flying rockets hard, and most importantly, all the planets. Also, we now have a fully working version of realistic uh, visual enhancements, right? So, previously when I was playing Serious Business, the visual enhancement mods weren't quite working for me, but now there is a simple download package. You do, do need to go and find a, an old version of Scatterer, but other than that, this is looking much, much better. It doesn't work with CCAN, but uh, it's a lot easier to get the whole thing installed, and assuming you get the right versions, it, it works great. There's one other feature you might want if, you, if you're building a realism overhaul install, and that is Principia. For complicated reasons related to the game uh, only allowing planets to rotate on a single axis in the entire universe, 
well, all the planets basically have the rotations aligned, and it is a little unrealistic in places, but Principia, as well as doing full-on orbital dynamics for every single body in the game, it actually fixes the axis of rotation, and I'm really hoping that feature kind of comes back into the main game. I gotta say, it really is pretty embarrassing that every single planet in the Kerbal Universe all rotates on the same axis. I mean, seriously, devs, what's going on there? I mean, I gotta be clear, I've been kind of whining at the realism overhaul developers for a long time trying to get things fixed and whatever, and I haven't been the most helpful person. But I'm really glad they continue to do this great project to try and fix all the bits where Kerbal Space Program isn't quite right for a realistic system. And yeah, realism overhaul is out there. It's easy to install now. The graphics overhaul is easy to install, and the only thing that isn't easy is, of course, building rockets that require 9 kilometers per second to get into orbit. I'm not going to go into the details because you've seen me doing mods before, but for those that are new to it, if you're running on Steam, right-click, you're going to have to, first of all, revert your version to Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. Don't worry, 1.3, the main thing that was added was languages, so 1.22 has basically all the features that you need. So revert that and then take a copy of that, put it somewhere else. Go to the Kerbal forums and look up CKAN, that's C-K-A-N, download that, put it in the directory and then run it. And then that'll let you install mods. Uh, so the one you want is Realistic Progression Zero or Realism Overhaul. That'll figure out all the dependencies for you, download everything. And then if you want the graphics overhaul, you're going to have to look for RSS Visual Enhancements. And there's a few things you have to download there manually. But uh, it's all pretty self-explanatory, and then you can, of course, be landing your aircraft on Titan like I just did. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.